Good morning, everybody. It's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. Today is November 6th, and I got a flight to take, but I thought I'd take a minute here. Uh, I just opened the Bible to this, and here we go. I'm over in Numbers, and you can read about <clears throat> uh, Balaam. We talked about Balaam talking donkeys. I mean, crazy. Uh, God spoke to Balaam, and even though he's speaking to him and prophesying through him that Balaam still was not a man of God. We got a third prophecy, and there's a census, the second census of Israel, which uh, uh, is very detailed. And it's hard to go through, but it's important. It's important in the light of the fact that uh, the Israelites kept meticulous records, and the Israelites were to be a light to the Gentiles. Uh, maybe they didn't realize that, since they thought uh, differently. Anyhow, Joshua is going to be the next leader of Israel. I love Joshua. We're going to read that. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go up into Mount Arab at Abiram and see the land which I have given the children of Israel. And when you see have seen it, also be gathered to your people, as Aaron was your brother was gathered. For in the wilderness of Zen, during the strife of the congregation, you rebelled against my command to howl of me at the waters before the eyes. These are the waters of Meribah at Kadesh in the wilderness of Zen. If you remember, Moses was told to speak to the rock. He didn't speak to the rock. Instead, he hits it two times, which uh, he ended up basically rebelling. He didn't do, he didn't, he didn't do what he's commanded. Then Moses spoke to the Lord saying, let the Lord of God, let the Lord, sorry, the God of all spirits of all flesh, Set a man over the congregation. Moses is a humble man. Who may go out before them and go in before them. Who may lead them and bring them in. That the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua. The son of Nun, he's smart. Moses is smart. Joshua is a great guy. A godly man. And a good leader. And, and a man who is in your spirits. And lay your hand on him. Set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and inaugurate him in their sight. And we're going to have an inauguration. We have a new president, y'all. This is just interesting how this is laid out. God sets men over his people. We need leaders. And we are like sheep. And you'll see that. All like sheep, we've gone astray. We need Jesus. Jesus Christ, Joshua, Jesus. These names are similar. By the way, um, and we have the indwelling spirit here. We have the spirit of the indwelling, sorry. We have the laying on hands, and he's going to be inaugurated, Joshua. So Moses did as what he commanded. He took Joshua and set him before Eleazar, Eleazar, L -E -A -Zar, the priest, and before all the congregation, laid his hands on him and inaugurated him just as the Lord commanded. Well, listen, I got to go, but the people need, the God's people need uh, and these are those that belong to god they they are a treasured possession and they are guided like a flock they need a good leader too they're prepared for service they're characterized by zeal and here's the most important thing i want to lay upon you that the law of god is written on your heart if you are a believer today if you are his the law of god is written on your heart this is through the Holy Spirit. This is what I talk about when I say, uh, well, when the Bible says, <laughs> I'm just a mouthpiece, I think. And when the Bible says that uh, you must be born again. See, you must be born again. This is when his seed, the Holy Spirit, indwells in us. He comes and he lives inside. He makes residence. How does that happen, Randy? Well, I'm going to tell you how it happens. This is how it happens. This is the quick and dirty this is a quick summation no it's not dirty at all i just uh i'm silly and it's three o'clock in the morning you must repent i am urging you and begging you you know people do not believe god it's amazing they don't believe in god we see we see if you go back and look at the senses i was even talking to somebody on facebook that i know that wanted to argue with me because i posted uh I posted, oh, I can't remember his name, Cliff. 
I don't know his last name, but he speaks. He's been speaking 39 years at universities, and he's an apologetics person. He uh, speaks to young people and uh, answers questions. But he came up with the number one reason, the number one reason why people choose to reject Christ. And it's not the evidence. It isn't the evidence. Because we have the historical evidence. We have the documents. These, the, 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 uh, the evidence for the Gospels uh, are here. We have the sufficiency, is what I meant to say, of scriptures. These, with these Gospels, these accounts that we have, and why others were rejected because of their inherency, these are throughout. If you read this book from Old Testament to New Testament, cover to cover, you will find that it, just like Dr. Thompson did in 40 years of his study, this is a Thompson Change Reference Bible, uh, it's no, there's no commentary. There's just reference of scripture. Four thousand topics, a hundred thousand scripture references. Scripture interprets scripture, and to not believe and, and the history. We have the historicity. We have the historical records. We know that Jesus Christ was alive. What year is it? And to, and to have this. Uh, to see this cliff, I can't remember. It starts with his K. I can't say his last name, but he's got an interesting spelling. But he says that the number one reason why people reject the gospel is not because of the historical fact. We're not going to refute that Jesus Christ was on the earth. Come on, he was. It was a man named Pilate. We know this. Uh, the even the Old Testament, we have proof of the Old Testament. More and more, we're coming up with that. No, the number one reason why is people don't want to change their life. They don't want to repent. They don't want to turn away from their sexual sin. They want to. They want to not be told what to do and not to do. They want to live their own life and be their own god. And that is the major reason why. Well, that, my friends, is a mistake. That is a mistake. And even talking to this, I posted on Facebook and I get kickback from people I know. Another guitar player in Florida that just says, well, I don't believe in the Bible. I said, well, just because you don't, don't believe in the Bible doesn't make it true. He came back, well, I'm out. Just because you believe in the Bible doesn't make it true. So that's as far as you can go. You know, you try to, uh, when you're out there evangelizing, by the way, a little tip, it's not about you, it's about God. And and that's that's it. Are are they his people or not? Because if you're his person, if you're his person, if you're called by him, you're going to hear his voice. As we we he's seen in in scripture, th that Jesus speaks, and those that he calls his, they they know his voice. The voice of God is is active in the believer, and you'll know it, and he will be calling you. Well, God calls and commands all men to repentance, by the way. He commands it. He doesn't want anyone to uh, die. He's made a way for you and I to uh, enter into heaven and not be judged. You will be judged, by the way. I wish I could talk to this man face to face. But maybe I talk to somebody out there. You will be judged if you don't believe in not just believe that jesus is alive head knowledge you believe means in in trust in in him with your life jesus is our leader he's our supreme leader those that are called by god they're called the elect they're the chosen ones and they're made perfect in him not by because we're perfect well you're just a sinner everybody's a sinner this is where it gets difficult. Yes. But I don't practice sin now. And, you know, in this man's case, he was saying that, well, he's moral. And, uh, you know, I asked him where his morality came from. Where, where does all that stuff come from? Well, uh, my friends, it comes from the Gospels. It comes from Jesus Christ, morality. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not... Thou... Thou shall not do these things is inside of a person's heart. It is inside of a person's heart and, and makes up what's called in your conscience, which is a switch that activates 
when you go against these things. Now, if you continue to go against these things, you will uh, desensitize, if you will, desensitize that switch. And you need a leader. You need the Holy Spirit. You need Jesus Christ in your life. You need to repent of your sin. Unless you repent, you too shall perish. A man must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You need to be born again. And that's how you get there, is through repentance. And thank God for Joshua. Joshua is a good, godly man. And here we are, November 6th. I hope that uh, I hope our president is a good, godly person to run. And, and that uh, they do all that they say they're going to do. And they allow the Holy Spirit to lead them. Because that's what's involved with Joshua here. And uh, he's a good man, and uh, the, the baton is being passed from Moses to him. Praise the Lord. God's people are guided like a flock. We are like sheep, have all gone astray. We need a shepherd, and the ultimate shepherd is Jesus Christ. Is he your leader today? Just take a moment to think about that. Is he the one that you bow down to? Is he the one you surrender to? If he isn't, then you are not you are, you're not a child of God. Oh, we're all children of God. No, you're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. A child of God is somebody who's repented of their sins and has come to realize that their sin is what's being judged. We're being judged. Jesus Christ came to save us from our sins. Then we won't be judged and go to hell. See, there'll be books that open and judgment day is coming very quickly and that whether the rapture happens or not whether you believe it's going to happen or not whether you're pre-trib post-trib no trib i don't know trib but the fact of the matter is judgment day is going to come and you have to face god and you have to face god for the things that you've done here's his standard it's not your standard mr sir <laughs> the morality isn't your well, i'm a good person i mean self-righteousness ain't gonna get you into heaven it's not your standard it's not your way the standard is don't lie have you ever lied before i have don't ever look at a woman lustfully have you ever done that of course don't look at a man lustfully either have you ever done that jesus says that those that do so have committed adultery in the heart you see that's the standard so we've all we've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's what Romans eight is talking about. We've all uh, Romans eight could be Romans eight. The wages of sin is death. I'm a little tired. Forgive me. It's three thirty in the morning. Uh, for the wages of sin is death, and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's where we're at. That's why you need repentance, and that's why you need to turn from your sin. You need to pluck your eyeball out that's causing you grief and throw it away, cast it away from you. Turn from that now. What happens with that is the Lord meets you more than halfway. He meets you with that. He meets you with that broken heart, that humble heart, that contrite heart. He He meets you with that and he, he comes to reside in you. It is truly a miracle. That's where you see like the alcoholic Joe ain't an alcoholic no more. His life has been changed by the power of of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ's atoning work on the cross. See, he took the penalty on the cross for you and me. He led the way, actually. He died. You must die to yourself. That's another way of looking at repentance. You must die to the God of self. You must die to your self-righteousness, sir. I'm thinking he's going to watch this. He's not. You must die to that. Otherwise, you will face the judge for all that you've done. And and the book that I've done, I just, it could be bigger than this Bible. The sins I've committed by thought, word, or deed. And, but you don't have to. He took a, he took a, God took a sinless man, his own, himself, in flesh, took a sinless man and paid the price for you and me. It is truly the most wonderful love story of all. And Jesus leads the way. We're going to see how Joshua leads the way in the upcoming. I can't wait. I love the story about Joshua. Joshua is such a good, 
leader, just a great leader in, in Christ. And why are those people saved? Because they look to the promise to come. We have the promise. We're looking, they have the same faith that you and I do. They're looking to the promise of salvation. What do you need saved from? My friends, you need saved from your sin. You need saved from your own self. You need saved so that when judgment day comes, and I will tell you, this man said, well, I'll see you. I don't believe in the Bible. And at the end, I'll see you in peace or something. I said, there'll be no more. There will be no peace there. He, he, and I said, Jesus Christ, is Jesus Christ real? Is he or is he not? In your life. I mean, who is he? He's either liar, lunatic, or Lord. I can say it like C.S. Lewis said. Uh, or like Nicky Cruz used to say here in Colorado Springs. And I thought he said it in back in the 70s. Listen, he's either a liar, lunatic, or he's Lord. He's claiming to be Lord. He claimed to be God. He claimed to be the God of the universe and a king. Is he the king? Well, is he more than a king in your mind, is he more than somebody in your mind? Is he king of your life? There's a young man out there that does a great lesson. He has milk and he starts putting soda in the milk. Well, it doesn't change the color of the milk. But the church is, he's using this analogy that the church is allowing sexual sin and allowing all kinds of sins. And he keeps adding Coca-Cola to this milk. It doesn't change the milk at all. But when you taste it, it sure doesn't taste like milk. And that, my friend, is a problem. So, you must repent. Please repent. <laughs> repent! As John the Baptist said, maybe he had an evangelist spirit too, or a gift like I do. Listen, I love you. And uh, I will try to post within a few days. We'll see. I got a long drive back from Florida. God bless you. I do love you. And I feel compelled to do these videos now, and I hope that people are lives are changing. Somebody write me, please. Tell me that your lives change. Tell me that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. Tell me that you need help. Tell, and tell me if you're struggling, if you're addicted to substances, porn, whatever. I can guide you. I can lead you. I can. I can lead you to the the leader, the ultimate king. I can lead you that way. I know I could do that at least for you because I love you. More importantly, Jesus Christ loves you too.